kind of world. When you talk about the kingdom of God being present now, mm-hmm. um, this was something that was not what the Jews thought about. They That's thought right. about it being something that they had to work for, mm-hmm. that they would have to attain. And in, in the way a lot of spiritual people think today, they they th- there's a better, I think, a better understanding of God consciousness. That God is the ground of all being. That God isn't out there, uh, or, but that God is within each and every one of us and in everything. And therefore, the kingdom is here. And we are all connected to that energy and we, we can see it, we can feel it if we are in touch with God. And Jesus never said, for instance, that uh, this kingdom would be marked by everybody believing in the same thing uh, yeah. or looking the same way or uh, on some kind of saved level. Um, the kingdom of God would be uh, in the hearts of a people who believed they could do mm-hmm. the miracles that Jesus did. Uh, these w- this would be the place where Jesus' miracles would happen, very commonplace. Mm-hmm. And uh, the believers would be those who, who took it personally. Uh, I do have the power to do miracles. That's what the whole point of Jesus' teaching was. Most of his teachings uh, were a little confusing to people. That's why he was. Because he taught in parables and he taught with stories. Now, they're confusing maybe to us. And I was talking to you about this before. We have been really, um, we have layers upon layers upon layers on certain words that is difficult for us to discard. Mm -hmm. And to really try and understand the. Um, the nuances of the Gospels, one must have a good foundation in the cultural world at the time. Yes. Okay? So, when, when people in certain denominations take sacred scripture, the words of Jesus or the uh, Jewish Testament, literally, they miss out on the nuances. They miss out on the symbol. The symbol points to something. It isn't the thing. It points to something else. Sure, Jesus would say uh, the kingdom of God is a cornfield or the, uh, the kingdom of God is um, uh, a widow who can uh, barely, barely support herself but thinks of the poor. Um, uh, and who is the widow? you got to think. Yeah. Hmm. The widow is God. Yeah. God who gives everything for us. I, I was thinking about, um, you know, how we were, when we were taught, you know, about the parables. There's one parable where, um, I think you, you remember this. This is the one where uh, Jesus says, um, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Okay? Mm-hmm. And um, he said, but I say to you, do not resist evil. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other. If anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give him your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Now we were taught I think, or took from that text, that Jesus was promoting submissiveness. Okay? Mm -hmm. And no way in the gospel was Jesus ever, ever submissive to wrongdoing. So how do you take that gospel? Well, you know, people were being shown that there's a possibility of, of power and of resurrection, of change, in very uh, simple things, 
the uh, non-pacifism, for instance, found that their strength was uh, that any time you opposed a pacifist, the opposer looked bad and would always come off as being uh, uh, cruel. And, and their and other strength... This is, the, this is the point, too, mm -hmm. is that what... You know, I believe that Jesus must have been the greatest entertainer. Mm -hmm. And that he must have had people rolling, falling down. Because when he would use examples like that, you had to know that if someone is going to, it says here, if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other. Do you, do you, in order to strike someone, all right, it usually was an inferior person, and you're going to teach them a lesson. You're going to put them in their place. If you're going to strike them on the right cheek, where's your right cheek? Well, I assume it's mine. That's your right cheek. Mm -hmm. Okay. In order to strike somebody, you have to use your left hand. In that culture, it was important to use the left hand. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that meant a backward slap mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now turn the other cheek. Mm-hmm. Can I sla slap them with a backhanded slap? It's impossible. Right. So this was one of the things. And the other thing with the um, suing, if you sue somebody in court, it's usually only the poor that were taken to court and stripped of everything. Okay? So if the person took your, your coat, Jesus says, take, give them your cloak as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that would mean the person would be naked. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, that was considered a very humiliating, degrading thing to allow anyone to be naked. Okay? And it would look more ominous on the person who was suing than on the person who was being disrobed. Because that's the other side of pacifism, right. for instance. Um, because once a person... Uh, attacked someone who was absolutely nonviolent in their approach, an absolute pacifism, pacifist, um, they would realize that they don't have any power. By attacking the pacifist uh, and they did not respond, they were not able to accomplish anything. They couldn't change mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't, they couldn't um, uh, do any more damage because uh, the person maintained their dignity, and um, and the um, and the uh, violator was in fact powerless against mm -hmm. uh, the strength of pacifism. Right. And it and became so a very active a thing. That Jesus is trying to show yeah. that the people that that you do not have to let yourself be victimized. Right. You may be victimized. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to allow it. You don't have to accept it. Uh, but you don't have to always get killed for it. Either. Because you're you're maintaining and you are giving that person your dignity, mm -hmm. and offering that as a something stronger than my sword, for instance. You know, mm -hmm. uh, my dignity will will survive anything you got to attack it with. You know, mm -hmm. and where do we get that? sense of dignity. Well, one of the ways is to get a sense of something beyond ourselves. Um, and because we share in what is beyond our, 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 our existence here, um, mm -hmm. we, we are attached to, we receive a power, a strength, a worth that is beyond our imaginations. Mm -hmm. And um, to be in touch with that uh, is to be in touch with, uh, I believe, uh, the God who shows um, uh, um, uh, attributes, who shows powers, strengths, very uniquely to you, something different mm -hmm. to me, um, something different to uh, uh, the camera people here. Um, so we, we all experience this uh, source of worth, uh, of personal love, uh, in different ways. Mm -hmm. You have different kinds of, of uh, revelation. Uh, we see God in different ways because God shows um, uh, 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 things about God that are different. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so we don't all experience God the same way. 